Hey everyone, so today I'm going to do a quick tutorial for Subalert, and Subalert is a lovely little program you can use while streaming, and I'm just going to show you guys. I've already downloaded it. I'm assuming if you're here, you probably already have too, so first things first, check for updates. That's what I'm going to do real quick, because I haven't opened this in a few days, just in case, you know. Let's let that do its thing. <laughs> Pretty sure we're good though. Hold on. Waiting and waiting. There we go. Alright, so start this up. This is what it will look like. Close the window behind us. So we have here, it'll ask you to wait and it'll give you donate to the project or launch. You're going to want to hit launch. Unless, of course, you want to donate, which I'm sure they would much appreciate. So here's what your program bar actually looks like when you open it first. Um, you can check here little things like your subscriber alerts, follower alerts, donation alerts, and this is what this program primarily takes care of. It'll let you track subscribers. If you have a sub button, it'll let you track followers and donation alerts. So really nice. <laughs> I love it. So let's do just followers because I don't have a sub button on Twitch. So we're going to go first off hit settings. Um, we're going to pretend we're setting this up for the first time. So you would want to go to follower alerts like that. Now but when you first do this um, it'll start off saying like sub alert here basically and you just put in your Twitch name no bells and whistles not the whole URL or anything but the actual name. So in my case it's females so it's already done. So you go to settings, you would then hit um, enable services, follow alerts have been enabled, and you would go to configure, and then you would hit the follower bar, and then boom, look this shows up. So this is all your uh, options, and here is your little preview bar, make sure you can see it. So here we go. First off, you can uh, make a banner within the program using a background and the bar. And so this is just going to be like your average, you know, rectangular bar. It's not anything particularly special, but it's good if you don't really want to have to go in and make your own custom graphics for this. So you can basically tell it to show the background, show the bar. And if I take away that, you'll see there's a bar. And then you can even have it to show an icon, which as you can see, it's got the default sub alert icon, which is kind of cool. So you can basically um, set this up to whatever size you want. As you can see right here, you can make it, you know, as small or large as you want to. And then you could even add like an icon, something you've drawn, a picture of yourself, whatever you want to in the corner here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to, I'm going to just use the background for now. And basically, we're going to keep all these the same. But as you can see, like, well, I'll just show you really quick. You can adjust how wide the background is. See? Pretty cool, huh? So these are your adjusting for size. You can round the corners of your bar. See, show icon. Oh, sorry, wrong one. Bar. So you can round the corners of your bar and stuff, which isn't showing because right now I don't have it up. But... You know, you can change stuff like that. You can change the color of the bar. Basically any color of the rainbow, as long as you have the color codes, the RBG numbers. Uh, we have down here, text settings. You can choose the same thing with the color of the text. With the fonts, you can use a wide variety. Um, it, whatever you have, pretty much works with whatever you have on your computer. Um, there might be some that don't work, that aren't supported, but for the most part, everything works. So I could be like, use this one, use the Franklin Gothic. And as you can see, it will change it over here. And uh, you can enlarge it, make it bigger, make it smaller, whatever you want to do. Right now it's teeny tiny. So let's do it to impact. That's a much better font. We'll make it like size 20. There we go. Now you can actually see it again. So then you have your icon settings over here. That's basically just, you can select one, like if you have graphics. I have my own personal Twitch graphics that I've made. I'm not going to use any of them, but 
we'll just pretend and use that one. Wait, that's a little bit too big. Hold on. <laughs> Let's try actually, hold on one second. Let's use my sub alert images. There's stuff that's smaller in here. So there's actually like little bars and whatnot. You see, it'll basically scrunch it up to the size that's a little square and uh, you can make something small enough to fit in there, obviously. So take that away. And now with the background, it's the exact same way. You can import your own custom made background. So if you have your own graphic that you've made for it to use as a background, you would just open it like do this and then boom, see, it puts it right up here. So you can use it. I have my image setting right now to gray for the text. Down here we have the sound settings, which is kind of cool. You can pick your own audio. So I don't have it open right now, but basically I made a file of people cheering and I added it to this. And if you want to listen, there we go. It's just kind of like what it'll look like. Now you won't see this green part because I'm going to green screen it out once I go into open broadcaster. So keep that in mind that only the background will actually show up. But there you go. It's that simple. You can adjust how long the animation runs, the length, the speed of how fast it goes by. There's this whole drop down menu of various things you can cho choose from like drop down, right, left, fade in, fade out. Lots of options in that. My personal favorites are the ones that fade in or left to right. Uh, let's see here. And down here, this is the follower settings, the text area. You basically leave this here. This says name and what it will do is it will put in the name of the person who just followed you where that is. So it might say so and so, you know, has just followed rather than name, obviously. Down here we have an option for disabling online anti-spam. So basically the program won't let people unfollow, follow, unfollow, follow and spam you. You can disable that and it'll just update when it updates. So technically someone could possibly spam you. So that's how simple it is. The other settings are pretty easy too. We're going to go look at those really quick. Let's look at the subscriber bar. Basically the exact same thing with a few more options, but all of this pretty much the same. The only difference is we have like combos and what a combo is, is basically, uh, I think the best way to describe this would be if you have a series of people subscribing in a set amount of time is basically how that works. So you can uh, put in sounds for all of these and have, I think, you know, it's pretty cool. You have like the combo break sound, uh, you have all these other sounds. They'll go off if people subscribe within a set amount of time. We have here alternate server option. If you're having issues using the subscriber alerts. Uh, obviously, a disable anti-spam. Um, and it says here, you know, a little information here about this with the combos. And again, you know, you can test your animations. I haven't set up anything here, so it just kind of looks silly right now. But you get the idea. It's basically the exact same thing. And if we go over here to configure the donation bar, you will see it's pretty much the same. <laughs> the only difference is the donation bar. You need to be using another program with it. So you need to be using Donation Tracker or I'm Raising. So remember that it doesn't like work independently. You do need to be using one of these programs with it, online sites. Um, but yeah, same basic thing, you know, like thank you so-and-so for donating and then I'll like say the amount and then you can even have a message if they, you know, left a message. Pretty simple. Whenever you're done with these, you, uh, we'll do it on the follower one. You hit save and close and then that's done. And then if there's no other settings you want to use, they do have settings for banned words, which I'll briefly open for you to look at. These are just things you can enter in that you don't want to show up. Um, it's mostly for the donations, obviously, and it's just so people can't troll you. So you hit start and then you wait a second and then here you go. Here's your bar. Uh, these are the little status blocks. Green obviously means it's good. 
Black means it's, you know, inactive or whatever. And red means something's just not working as far as I know. We have return to configuration, a close out button, and then we have show stats. And this is where it gets interesting. So you can see here, it'll tell you subs today, followers today, donators today. Down here we have a little more information, like you can see the recent donators. There's some quick control F10 to hide troll donation. And then you have the test buttons here. So here's the fun part, <laughs> getting it to work on OBS. So we're gonna pull up our OBS window. You'll have to forgive the amazing view we have right now. Uh, so all you're gonna do is have the program open <coughs> and in this setting basically. And we're gonna want to right click, add, and we're gonna add window capture. You can name this whatever, but I'm just gonna name this, I'm just gonna name this SA for sub alert right now. We're in a hurry anyways. Then we're going to want to pick the main alert like that. And you're gonna wanna refresh once. I forgot to rush, refresh before doing that. So let's do that. Hit, make sure all these look good. Capture layer windows, I always do that. Uh, compatibility mode, why not? And then basically you can come down here. You can use color key, select. And you come over here and you pick on your screen, obviously, within the window, the color of the outside, which in this case is lime green, because I know there's not going to be anything else that color on there. And I'll hit OK. And so now we're going to go into edit. And there's our window up here. See? So we can place it anywhere. The nice thing about this is you can actually use this with your um, streaming layouts. If you have one, you can make an area for it, you know, like draw an area or set up a space for it to actually like pop in, which will look really cool. Um, some people I've seen have it just kind of floating up at the top. Some people like in the corner, so wherever, you know. But now all we're gonna do is come over here and hit test followers. And there you go. It shows up on your stream. Simple as that. <laughs> you can edit the size in stream. You'll see a little bit of a green glow on the side there. I've never actually seen it happen while streaming, but it sometimes it does show up on the edge. A wee bit annoying, but you know. Most of the time it doesn't show up on stream. I'm not sure why it does in the preview, but simple as that. So there you go, guys. That's how you set it up. Now there are a couple of troubleshooting things that I think everyone should remember when using this program. One of which is that every single time you open OBS, every single time, you're going to want to come back into this setting that you have for your broadcaster and you're going to go into the window settings, the properties, and you're going to want to refresh it every single time and make sure it's on the right window and that you've refreshed it. And it's mostly because for whatever reason, after you've closed all these programs up, even when you bring them up with zero changes to the programs, every single time I do this, it does not work. I don't know why, it just, it doesn't. I have to hit refresh and then it just, it works. So keep that in mind. If you find that you set it all up and you turn it back on the next time you stream and you're like, it's not working, what's wrong? That's probably what's wrong. The only other thing that can be slightly a pain in the butt about this wonderful little program is sometimes in the settings when you are using to, okay, there we go. Apparently we had an error. Sometimes those happens and those are little errors and it like force closes. That's kind of a pain too, but rarely does that one happen. All right. So the other thing that you want to keep an eye out for is when using this program, sometimes the animation down here that you pick, and this doesn't happen that often, but I have had it happen before. Sometimes when you pick the animation, it will just get stuck on it. And no matter what you pick, like it doesn't matter. You could pick top to bottom, left to right, anything you pick, after that original animation, for some reason, after you've saved it, once in a while, it won't change. It'll just lock up and like, no matter how many times you open and close the program, it never fixes the problem. 
When that happens, my suggestion is to simply completely reinstall the program. It fixes it, and it's good as new. I don't know why also. I mean, that's just one of those bugs in the program, I think, that they still haven't, you know, fixed yet. But for the most part, for a free, easy-to-use program for alerting you and showing off your new followers or subs or even donations while streaming, this is like one of the best programs you can use, and I highly recommend it. So I hope this tutorial was useful for you guys, and if you have any questions that you need answered, feel free to ask me, and I will be happy to answer them in the comments. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.